Hello and welcome to another mixtape show. And today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Bruce Foxton from The Jam. How are you, Bruce? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks so much for coming on and, and giving me your time, mate. I really, really appreciate it. So from The Jam, greatest hits tour coming to Australia and New Zealand. Farewell tour, mate. Is, is this the last we're going to see of you down under? Well, I think never say never, you know. I don't know if that's just a press thing that they put out, but if my health continues to be okay and, and audiences still want to hear those songs, then why should I shut the door on it all, you know? Exactly right, mate. And I'm sure speaking as a as an audience member and as, and as a fan, I, I, I can definitely say that we do still want to hear those songs, mate. Speaking of which, so the clues in the title, really, in terms of the set list and what you're going to be playing, greatest hits of the jam. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, great yeah. hits and a selection of album tracks, probably. Right, OK. I'll just run through the tour dates very quickly. I've got them in front of me here. So March the 8th is the North Coat Theatre in Melbourne. March the 9th, the Tivoli in Brisbane. March the 10th, the Manning Bar in Sydney. March the 13th, the Gov in Adelaide. And Saving the Best Till Last. March the 14th, the Astor Theatre in Perth. It's metropolistouring.com for tickets for those. And I know from, from previous experience that these these normally sell out pretty, pretty swift. So I would jump in as soon as you can if, if I were you for tickets for that. And I was just going to ask you as well, Bruce, about your your album, The Butterfly Effect with with Russell. Will you be playing any yeah. of those tracks on this tour or is it just purely? Yeah, we're playing band? a couple. Um, oh, okay. A track called Lula that is going down well live. Basically, mm -hmm. I mean, they don't go. The audience don't go as nuts as they do to a jam song. But then, why would they? Because it's new; they haven't heard it before. But yeah, yeah it's getting, yeah. A, re getting a good reaction. It must be difficult with with a back catalogue like yours. It must be difficult to to just pick a best of kind of greatest hit set list. But I'm going to put you on the spot, Bruce. And if you had to pick three jam tracks, your, your favourite three, your top three, what three would you pick, mate? Well, at the moment because it, it would change you know, in five minutes time but probably like in, in the crowd i enjoy tube station and probably gun underground yeah yeah down in the tube station because i think that's yeah I've, I've talked about that on other podcasts that i've done and, and on my own podcast as well that was a that was a real sort of defining moment of my of my music listening childhood i was only a slip of a lad but yeah that really had an effect on me the first time i heard it with the butterfly effect album that was that was like a, a lockdown project was it tell us a little bit about that and how that sort of came about yeah we were recording in a studio in brighton and obviously covid everything came to a stop and so we had to put the dates back eventually we got the okay to go in the studio but we were testing each other every time we went in the studio you know just to mm -hmm. double check that no one had covid because at that time it was still pretty scary but it was made it we put the album on pause really because we couldn't really get together and work mm. the tunes out. But eventually, yeah, once the the band, so to speak, was lifted, we got on, cracked on with it. It was a pleasure, so so enjoyable after such a long break to get mm. to play music again. Yeah. Um, incredible artwork as well. I love the artwork for it. Yeah, I love I love what you've done. For anyone who hasn't seen it, it's it's like four guitar plectrums, two red and two blue. With like two yeah. strings, two guitar strings down the middle that looks like a butterfly. It looks amazing. I would one hundred percent. You can see behind me there that that would that would lovely that would go lovely on my wall. That album cover. So yeah, will you be bringing some vinyl and merch and stuff to the to the gigs when you come down? I, I think it's it's kind of not really cost effective to do that, but we might be doing stuff that via the record company that we can get shirts printed up or whatever. I haven't spoken right. to Russ about that yet. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to save myself a bit of postage, mate, and pick them up from you at the gig instead of instead of getting them shipped all the way to Australia. But that's all good. That's one of the worst things about living down here is the postage cost. If you want to buy any vinyl or anything like that from outside Australia, it's absolute killer. Yeah, and obviously vinyl records through the post is not always the not always the safest option. But yes, yeah, so I was hoping to grab one off you at the gig, but never mind. Uh, Bruce, I noticed as well, like you, you're touring the UK, you've got UK dates going on at the moment. Then you're coming down to Australia. And you're touring the UK again, like you're a busy man. You must be one of the the hardest working men, like in show business. Like, how do you how do you keep up with that kind of schedule? It's knackering, basically. <laughs> it's something we had to address because Russ had a couple of stents put in last year, mm -hmm. 
and I had cancerous lymph node, which they removed, and fingers crossed, hopefully everything's all right. Mm -hmm. So we just thought, hang on, let's ease up a bit. Let's make it, you know, well, yeah, let, let, let's ease up a bit. Because now we're doing a couple of shows a, a week, which is fine, it's manageable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, doing yeah. four or five, and because of the nature of the band and the songs, you know, it's not yeah. a walk in the park, you know, it's very energetic. And yeah, it takes yeah. its hold. So yeah, yeah we, we're kind of pressing how busy we are. I mean, it's mm. nice that we can do that, you know. Yeah, you're not exactly sitting there on stool strumming acoustic guitars, are you? I'm sure the energy uh, levels. Well, are... well, we do that. We do do that. I'm, Just I'm yeah, oh, like as a, like a little break. Yeah, I'm, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Good idea. That's a good idea. That actually, yeah, yeah. I saw uh, I saw Bad Manners a few weeks ago, and Buster Blood Vessel did did a similar sort of thing. He, he had a sort of a mid set sort of yeah break while the other lads did like a couple of instrumental numbers yeah fantastic gig that was that was amazing yeah bad man and still he's still got it old buster yeah it was it was superb yeah, he's a nice guy because our paths cross in the uk quite often you know the yeah, festival yeah 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 so, yeah getting all right yeah. Yeah. Like when i interviewed him he asked me what the best pie shops were in <laughs> in perth <laughs> <laughs> yeah that yeah. sounds like <laughs> yeah, it was great crack. Yeah, it was good. I met him after the show as well. Yeah, he was a good he was a good bloke. Yeah, it was really, really good to meet him. Okay, Bruce, I'm gonna spring this on you a little bit, mate, because normally I send this out beforehand, but don't always have time. So my radio show and podcast is called The Mixtape. And what I normally do is when guests come on, I ask them to to kind of imagine they're making a mixtape or a playlist or you know, burning a CD compilation or whatever, and to pick a pick a few tracks for it. So in the sort of short time we got left, I'll I'll fire those categories at you. So when I make up a, a mixtape or or a playlist, Bruce, I always go in with like a like a killer track, like an attention grabber or something that's gonna, you know, really kick it off in fine style. So if you were making up a mixtape, like that, like what sort of track would you, what would be your, your intro, your attention grabber? Probably so from The Who, My Generation. That's a great one. That's a great one. So last, I did one, I think it was the last interview I did, someone picked one, get fooled again. But yeah, My Generation, yeah, doesn't get any more classic than that. And and like you say, yeah, absolute superb choice as, a, as an attention grabber, track one. That would, that would definitely draw me in. <laughs> track two, yeah. Bruce. Is what what's a song that you sort of sing loud and proud when you're on your own in the car or the shower, mate? Well, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll skip over that one. We'll skip over that one. Track four, a song you wish you could have played to your 18 year old self. Waterloo Sunset. That's a great one. Yeah, that's a great one. What sort of stuff were you listening to when, when you were 18, Bruce? A lot of Motown. Yeah, right, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. My middle brother, three mm. brothers, and one sadly died, so I called him the middle brother. He mm. was a great. He was an original mod for a start. Mm. So he would go to local clubs and stuff, and Motown was mm. top of the list, what they were playing, and he would bring stuff home, like well, albums home. But yeah. on one occasion, he, he bought the, the best of the four tops, I think it was, which he played to death. It was real to real. Yeah. I was just getting interested in the guitar, and we had a little real to real recorder. Mm -hmm. And um, I sort of thought, oh, God, I want to tape what I'm playing. So I, I, mm -hmm. the machine had the tape on it, just pressed record and the play button, wobbled on it, you know, like wobbled on it. And it was only after about a minute that I realised I was recording over his greatest hits. Oh, dips. no. Four oh, top no. Songs. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? You know, <laughs> it was like, oh, walk away, Renee. And then it's me going, oh, no, 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 no. I imagine he would have noticed. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't seamless, that's for sure. And the the jam when you when you were very first starting out in the jam and playing the working men's clubs and whatnot around Woking, that's the sort of stuff you used to do, right? When when you were yeah. very first starting out, like yeah, we were on after the bingo, you know, <laughs> or, the, or the meat raffle draw, you know. Yeah, yeah, we still have them. They're popular in Australia. The meat the meat raffles, we still have them. We have them all the time. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, 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 we have them all the time. Yeah. Okay, track five, Bruce, of your mixtape. And normally when, you know, we've all done it, when you make up a mixtape and, you know, you're trying to 
let someone know that you're sort of romantically interested, what's a song you'd put on there to, to let the listener know that you're sort of romantically keen? I'm not in love. Oh, ten, someone else picked that not long ago, actually. You're the second person to pick that. I'm trying to think who it was now. I've done so many of these, I can't remember. Yeah, classic love song. Yeah, it's like that sort of school disco classic sort of last, yeah. last song of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. That's what I was doing and getting this girl up to dance with me. Well, I've been, I can't dance to save my life. You won't be seeing me on Strictly. Yeah, yeah but same. So I go around the circles, really. But uh, <laughs> when that track came on, I sort of got up and thought, give it a go. Yeah. We've been yeah. Like going out with each other for a while. Oh, nice. Anyway. Good, good work, mate. Oh, it's work for you, then. It's work for you. Track six, something that's like obscure, or maybe a B-side or an album track or or something like that. What's, what's maybe a jam album track or b-side that, that you really really like bruce that's entertainment am i right in thinking that you, you 18 years old when when that was written is that right but there about, that yeah. because i'd have been 20 so yeah it would have been yeah. about that yeah but for me like that that staggers me like that that maturity of songwriting at, at that age is just yeah unbelievable lyrically yeah, that's I, just... um, yeah i totally agree with you i was knocked out really when we started to do from the jam i was obviously re revisiting stroke learning yeah, the, the yeah. and i was obviously because i was in the comfort of my own home and strumming and i paid more attention to the lyrics and it was like like you just said amazing for like an yeah, 18 yeah. 20 year old yeah. to come up and... yeah 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 it's just I, I i think of that like as someone who sort of grew up wanting to get away from from where I was living. Obviously as you can probably tell from the accent, I ain't I ain't an Aussie mate. I'm from from Essex originally and growing up around there and like feeding ducks in the park and wishing I was far away. Constant like that lyric stays with me like always. Like that's how I used to feel like just, you know, walking around the streets in the town centre that I grew up in, just thinking there's somewhere better than this. Do you know what I mean? There must be. Yeah. And that that lyric, that's one of my all time favourite lyrics that so yeah. That's entertainment, yeah, it's superb. Was that never a single, Bruce? It was an import. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, radio, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, All again, right. it's a great track live to do. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, I think that was. I think I might have. It might have been one of the, the early songs I learned to play on the guitar because it's not that many chords, is there? It's a pretty easy uh, one. It's a yeah. pretty easy one to play on the guitar, and yeah, it might have been one of my first my first goes at, at, at learning a song on the guitar. That one, yeah. Okay, on that note, Bruce Foxton, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate your time, mate. Cannot wait to see you at the Astor Theatre in Perth on March the 14th. MetropolisTouring.com for tickets. Get on there soon because they will sell out super quick. Thanks, Bruce. See you soon, mate, when you get down. Thanks, home, not, mate. Mate. thanks Bruce. Have no. a good one, mate. See you later. Thank you.